Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Max. And this is Movies Actually, where we give you an honest review of the movies we've meddled with so mischievously over on Maybe Movies. And this time, we will be discussing V for Vendetta. (laughs) This is the 2005 James McTeague-directed action thriller with a script by the Wachowskis and starring Hugo Weaving... Natalie Portman, <laughs> here we go, uh, Stephen Rear, Stephen Fry, Tim Pigott-Smith, William Hurt, Imogen Poots, Eric Marson, uh, Rupert Graves, et al. <laughs> I think that's... Indeed. I'll, I'll, I'll probably remember a few later and just drop them in. Oh, is it Robert or Richard Allen? Oh, okay. Prothero? So. Oh, yes, of course. Right. Yeah. yeah. Again, he's one of the, another one of those character actors that you, you recognise like, the voice... Uh, but you may not have heard his name. Did you like that? Right, okay. I was going to say, I don't know him personally, but then again, I don't watch regular TV, so... It's been a while since the year, same. But yes, so this was the Hollywood adaptation of the DC graphic novel by Alan Moore, which I don't know, when, when did that come out? Was it ni- the late 90s, wasn't it? What, V for Vertetta? No, that was the 80s. But if oh, I remember it? rightly... It didn't get finished until either late 89 or 1990 because he took his time over the last two or three issues for various reasons I don't truly understand. But yeah, I I think originally the series started in 86 or 87. Wow. Um, But like I say, it wasn't finished until 89 or 90. And obviously this, it is an adaptation. I understand that there are quite a lot of differences between this and the graphic novel, as there tends to be. There are significant differences. And, of course, this is one of those films that are famously disowned by Alan Moore for that very reason. Yes, along with From Hell and The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I believe. Oh, and uh, don't forget Watchmen. Did he, did he disown Watchmen as well? Yeah, it's oh, only okay. got Dave Gibbons' name on the credits. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, which, I mean, in some ways I understand, because he keeps saying that people don't get the point of his, his books. But the problem is, is if you read his books, his books often have... Five, six, seven concurrent themes and, uh, you know, points to be made. So it's a bit difficult, especially when you're making a film, and of course you have to kind of narrow down what you're actually saying. Absolutely. So, yeah, so it's like, well, yeah, well, which point do you, do you, are you referring to? Mm, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to say, I, I, I think that for me personally, the ending of the graphic novel was not nearly as satisfying as the ending of this. It happens, you do get that. Occasionally occasionally yeah. Hollywood does good. Because <laughs> the whole thing fizzles out in the comic. Right. I, uh, I'm not, I'm not with them. They don't have to do anything with um, Suffler. Oh, uh, okay. He, he goes mad and falls in love with his computer. And just completely ignores everything that V is doing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, when I say he fell in love with his computer, I'm not sure, but I think the implication was it was some sort of AI that he <clears> developed <throat> a relationship with. But yeah, it, it just was a bit of a deflated ending. In terms of all of the rising action, and then it's, so it's more of a this is how the world ends with a whimper, not bang. Yes, very much so. No, that's a shame. We did this again a couple of years ago, which was the other half of our matchup with the Count of Monte Cristo for yeah. obvious reasons. Indeed, be uh, fairly evident. Yes, yeah. I was also thinking when we were watching this earlier as well. There's a kind of a parallel, obviously, between that and, and the story of Edmund Dantes. But there's also kind of a parallel with Phantom of the Opera. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that, yes. Mm. Did you see it at the cinema? I saw it at the cinema, yeah. Okay. I, at the time, because all of the advertising was from the Wachowskis, from the makers of The Matrix, I honestly thought the film was directed by the Wachowskis, so I was just like, ooh, I've got to see the next thing from those guys. Uh, so I went to the movies to see it. I uh, loved it, loved it, but it was a number of years before I realised it wasn't actually directed by them. <laughs> I don't think I did. I think I saw this uh 2005. I was living in Warwickshire. I saw it on the small screen, I know that. So I don't know whether I was, if I saw it in 2005, possibly I saw it when I moved back here in 2006. Okay. So I think... So a, a rental. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was one of those ones where I watched it the first time and thought, yeah, it was pretty good. And it wasn't until I kind of revisited it a couple of years later that I really got to appreciate it. Oh, right. No, I... I did really enjoy it straight out of the bat. It's one of those things, it's a bit like The Matrix. There are certain films that quintessentially distill an idea, a fundamental truth about life or the society that we live in, mm-hmm. in into a, a, a single sentence or a, sing, you know, a single paragraph. And, um, you know, uh, people shouldn't be afraid of the government. The government should be afraid of the people is right up there on one of those things that made me go, yes. 
Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So I got really into it. That's how I actually went out and bought the graphic novel and uh, read it after watching the movie. So you hadn't read the, the comic? You hadn't read the graphic novel? No, first? no. Ah, I mean, okay. um, I wasn't really into comics in the eighties when right. these things came out, and it was always like I knew it existed. It's like Watchmen. I knew it existed. And I was like, I'll get round to it one of these days. And then the movie came out. It was like, ah, now I need to. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for context, yeah, absolutely. yeah. But yes, it is. It is. It's an interesting one to be discussing now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. On, on, on the back of the... Unspecified virus of unknown origin. <laughs> this is one of the things. I mean, it was written in the 80s. Alan Moore is very vocal about, like, a lot of this stuff was a vocal response to the conservative... The Thatcher, let's be honest, the Thatcher government mm-hmm. with, with its fundamental stubbornness and just... So many things happened in the 80s in the UK. It was a protest against that. I mean, because they were talking about making being gay being illegal again and yes. things like that, which is why there are the strong uh, LGBTQ themes in the film, mm-hmm. in, the, in the story. You know, it's built into the story. He was so outraged by that. And the weird thing is that in 2005, it was still relevant. And somehow it's still relevant now. Yes. I, it's <laughs> yeah. a little bit worrying. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of hoodwinking an entire country into... Uh believing in something that may not be true. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You almost got us. You almost got us. And there's apparently there's some other bill apparently they're trying to get passed again now, which was quashed before. But um, basically upping the penalties for civil disobedience. Oh, yeah. Like creating a public nuisance 10 years in prison. You're shitting me. Using a loud hater outside of the uh, Houses of Parliament something like £1,500 fine and a year in prison. Oh, well, they've been trying to do that one for quite a while. Yeah, they, they keep trying to steal it, but steal it, it's, it's stealth it through under different names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that pesky freedom of speech gets them every time, though. It does, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> anyway, so would you like to have a go at the um, the, the very basic plot line of this one, then? Oh, uh, a simple break. All right, so in, in a somewhat dystopian near future United Kingdom, we follow the story of young Evie, who works for the British Te- television network, network? Yeah. BTN. Because I bet the BBC threat to sue them if they actually use that. And gets entangled with a mysterious terrorist figure who calls himself V. Who seems determined to force the public and the government to face up to the consequences of their actions. Yes, that's it. Absolutely spot on. Again, I think you laughed about the same time as well of the irony of using a figure like Guy Fawkes as as a freedom fighter. Uh, Yes. It was. It, it is. It is ironic because, of course, he he was a, a Protestant, a Puritan. No, he wasn't. He was a Catholic. He was Catholic. Did I get back to front? Back to front. Oh, I yeah. got back to front. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. He was a Catholic. He's no, he was Guy Fawkes. He was also known as Guido Fawkes because he went and fought for the Spanish. Oh, in the hundred year, in the eighty years' war. I've seen it written down, Guido. Before I didn't realize that's where it came. Yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. No, he was. He was English, but he moved to for the Spanish, who were obviously Catholics, and then returned with the idea of destroying Parliament to kill King James the First. To put a Catholic king back on the throne. Oh, I literally did get it back to front. Uh, but the interesting idea is that, well, no, 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 that does make sense. So it was a protest against the Protestant. It was a protest against the Protestant, but the problem is, that the reason why, the irony of it is, for, for me anyway, is that, especially at the time, the Catholics were known regressives. They are very repressive, especially of scientific endeavour. So oh, things yeah, like the true. Enlightenment and things like that, if they yeah. succeeded, probably would never have happened. And we'd, we probably potentially wouldn't have the technology that we have today yeah. if you'd have succeeded. Because they would have repressed so much of it. No, that's true. That that pesky science did get in the way of everything, didn't it? Yes. Although apparently, again, something I did find out today, in, in the film, the three that they tried to track down, Rookwood, Percy and Keats, is mm-hmm. it? Or uh, Keys? That was names of three of the other original gunpowder plot conspirators. Ah! It's a nod to that. They put them in the film. Nice touch. <laughs> oh, good. I thought we'd got on a horrible tangent, but it actually no, makes no, sense. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great movie. Wonderfully shot. Lovely soundtrack. Except for the end credits music. Just jarringly out of place with the rest of the soundtrack. It's almost like they wanted to do let something brash and bold and brave. And, and, it, and it just doesn't come off like that at all. No. No. They should, um, they should have still kept it in theme, really, with the rest of the film. But it is, as you say, it is a fantastic film. Any film that uh, champions the idea of 
freedom and freedom of expression is, is always going to be a win for me. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And again, it did well, you know, they, again, compared to modern movies, it was made for a modest 50 million. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, compare that to today's budgets. Yeah, and took about 143, I think, worldwide. So, so more, it did okay. Yeah, more than made his money back. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a stellar cast. What I really liked about it for an American film, it's not quite uh, Dick Van Dyke kind of English, but there are there's just some nice turns of phrase that you feel would be quintessentially English if this happened for real. Yeah. Uh, just the way people kind of react to certain things. <laughs> it was really nice. Uh, I do appreciate that. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Are you like a crazy person? <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen it, if you do need uh, a, um, <laughs> a a lighter version of the Anarchist's Handbook for uh, plotting the downfall of the government, you could probably start here. <laughs> it would be a good place to start. Although you have to have... Sp- Oh, no, 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 sorry, I was going to go a step too far, no, 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 forget that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but it's definitely worth a look, it was a pleasure to do it on the show. Actually, again, while, I was, while we were watching it today, I was thinking another one we could have done it would have been The Crow. They're okay, all... yeah, I could sort of see that. Yeah, they're both with tales of revenge. Yes, yeah. Uh, as a lot of these seem to be getting at the moment, definitely, definitely gets the two thumbs up from me. Oh yeah, two thumbs up all the way. Yes, do you, do you go and check it out, and if you do, let us know what you think, obviously, in the comments below. And do all of the usual. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. And hit the bell to be kept apprised of fresh content. <laughs> and now, uh, if you'll excuse me, in the most stagey manner possible, I must go and lament the passing of my boy, Drogo! <laughs> See you next time. (laughs) As always, guys, TTFN.